Welcome back to Small Arms Firearms. Today, we go over why I chose 300 Blackout as my main home defense rifle. First, let's kind of discuss what you should be looking for in a home defense firearm, whether that's your main one or it's one of the three of them. It's anytime you're looking at self-defense or home defense firearm, it should have these qualities. Reliability, effectiveness, ease of use, capacity, and let's not forget price. That is a part of this. Reliability. Well, no shit. You need something when you pull the trigger, it goes bang. If not, what's the point of it? You might as well have a baseball bat then. Save yourself a bunch of money, just use that. Now, effectiveness is pretty broad statement. What I mean by effectiveness is its ability to stop a threat. So that's gonna include the cartridge itself, capacity, ease of use, which we talk about later, um, and just your ability to use the firearm. That is its effectiveness in stopping a threat. When I say ease of use, I'm more talking about the battery of arms. Are you used to it? Is this something that you know how to manipulate? Have you practiced with it? You can do that with other firearms. It doesn't have to be an AR. I personally prefer this because I've been using it for so long and I have experience with it. And it's easy for me to manipulate and I'm effective with it. Capacity is also part of this conversation because when you grab this and maybe in the middle of the night or you need to go quick, you're not necessarily gonna have a plate carrier on or your tack belt. You're not gonna have extra mags laying around, but you know that when you grab that AR, you got 31 ready to go. A big part of this is also price. We don't all have the same budget and that has to be mentioned here. So any firearm is better than no firearm as long as you train with it. I cannot reiterate this enough. If you train with a firearm enough, you will be effective with it. Just make sure you train and you can afford the ammo and the range time to do so. Now, subsonic is a heated debate all the time with ammunition. 45 ACP is just naturally subsonic, so there's not really much of a conversation there, but 300 blackout, you can use subs or supers. And we all know the supersonic cartridge has way more energy, way more stopping power, and is effective at much longer ranges, but it's loud. Shooting a gun indoors is a brain rattling, painful experience if you do it without hearing protection. And if I'm waking up in the middle of the night to something crazy going on in my house, I'm not spending the time to put hearing protection on myself, but more importantly, I won't have the ability to put hearing protection on my family. So I don't want to destroy their hearing and I don't also don't want to disorient myself potentially with a lot of really loud noise in small conf confined spaces. This one right here, I have shot multiple times, indoor ranges, no hearing protection. The absolute loudest thing that comes out of this is when the projectile hits the steel backstop. I think I have paintball guns that are basically as loud as this thing because every time you shoot it, it's basically just that. And that's the noise it makes. What I ended up settling on was uh, an Aero Precision Complete Upper. I think I got it from Optics Planet and an Aero Precision just kind of stripped lower that I got at the local gun store. Um, that's where I usually buy any of my serialized parts just for avoiding FFL fees. Um, I do have the quad rail on this because it came with the M-Lock and when trying to mount the laser and the light, the mounting screws for the M-Lock kept hitting the gas block to where it wouldn't secure it. And I don't know if that's just because my arms are kind of long and where I need them for my ergonomics, it just did not work with the M-Lock for me. So it does add some weight to the front end, um, which is already a little heavier than the back. I'm not gonna lie, this thing is not balanced perfectly. You add the suppressor, the laser, the light, it gets hev much heavier up front than the back. Uh, Honestly, I always have a problem pronouncing this. It's like a tongue twister for me. The super, superlative, <laughs> superlative arms. That was rough. 
<laughs> gas block. Um, yeah, I gotta stop making these so late. Um, it's the adjustable gas block. It works great. Um, I had the rifle built before I had the suppressor, so it's nice to be able to choke it off so you're not getting so much gas blown back in your face. The BCG isn't slamming back like a raging boar. So that is a huge part, I think, when you're doing any kind of suppressed build. Having an adjustable gas block is very important, at least in my opinion, for shootability. The laser on this is, I believe, the Holosun, Holosun 117. Uh, it's a green laser version. I don't need something with a night vision, IR, emitter, laser. I don't need any of that stuff. I don't own night vision. It's small. It's lightweight. It works well, and for the price, you can't beat it. So that's why I went with the hollow sun. This is also the Surefire Scout. I think it's the Mini. I don't really remember, uh, but it's it's mounted on the side here, angled up. Uh, the button itself is from HRF Concepts. It's actually an angled kind of button up, and so that's nice to be able to, for ergonomics, just it works great with the way my thumb position goes. So check them out. Um, it's really lightweight, mounts easily. Um, and this has kind of like the dual button system. So when I do push the button, it activates the laser and the light at the same time. That's how I want it to work. I don't care if it's daylight or not. Um, I change the batteries in these things every year like I do all my other optics. And I want it to be able to be as foolproof as possible if I am half awake and stumbling out of bed with adrenaline going, I only have to push one button and the laser comes on and the light comes on. The laser itself, I zero at 10 yards for close encounter engagements and the dot is going to be zeroed at 50 yards just in case I had to stretch out a little farther for some weird reason, um, but mostly it'll just be using the laser for quick shots. For the suppressor, we have the Dead Air Nomad 30. Um, this is the only suppressor I own and I don't really have a whole lot of experience with any other suppressors and it works really well. So that's all I can say about that really. It's phenomenal. It's suppressing my 6.5 Creedmoor. It's great at suppressing supersonic 223. Obviously that's still not hearing safe at all. Um, but so it's really versatile in that 30 cal range and I've been enjoying it thoroughly. Also up here on the front is the Strike Industries uh, short vertical foregrip that has that kind of slot here for uh, putting it onto a barrier. You know, I didn't think I'd like it as much as I did. I have tried, I can't even count how many vertical foregrips I've tried from different companies, angled, straight, round, it doesn't matter. I've tried almost all of them. And this thing is amazing, especially for the price. I find it really stable and if I absolutely for some reason needed to push it into a barrier as a stop that extra ledge that whatever that cutout works awesome at making sure you're not going to slide forward I know a lot of people hate strike industries and call it gaudy and they just are goofy it has worked absolutely lights out for me uh, the red dot on it is just your standard hollow sun 510c nothing special about that um, with a cheap UTG mount uh, riser. One of these days I'll switch to like a Unity riser or something, but for now, it stays at zero. It works well for me and for the price, again, it works. Now the bolt carrier group is from Aero Precision. It's their black nitride one. I actually have a really nice Lantec um, bolt carrier group. One of the, it's nickel something, it's super slick. I tried running it in this, and for some reason, I don't know if it's the upper, if it's 300 blackout suppressed and subsonic, the BCG did not like it. I was having feeding issues and ejection issues, so I put that back in my 5.56, and it runs amazing in that, which is also an aero precision upper, but it did not like this, so got the black nitride aero precision bulk carrier group and it works great now the trigger is from cmc and this is their combat curve trigger uh i got this on sale at optics planet and this thing i think i i don't remember how much i paid for it maybe like 120 one oh, safety's on like 120 and this thing is just a great trigger 
It's short, it's crisp, the brake is easily identified, and the wall is very, very short. Uh, or sorry, the pre-travel is very short. Post-travel is barely anything. Reset's quick. Um, it's right at three pounds, 10 ounces, which I feel like is perfect for, I don't know, I wouldn't call it a battle rifle, but it's not a chunky trigger and it's not a hair trigger. So it's phenomenal for what it is um, built for. Uh, and lastly, um, just your generic Magpul stock now that this thing is SBR'd. So I have multiple firearms that I could call home defense or self-defense. My EDC is obviously my go-to for pretty much most of the day. Um, but when it comes to all the things we've discussed with capacity and effectiveness, I would much rather have a cartridge like 300 blackout than nine millimeter um, for neutralizing a threat you know, or multiple threats, especially with capacity. So also the ability to shoulder a rifle and stabilize it to make for faster follow-up shots, consistent accuracy is way easier with a rifle than it ever will be with a handgun. And there are master level shooters that can just rip a handgun and be super accurate and very fast. Something I can't do on their level, but a rifle will get me closer to that level without having to have 20 years of competitive shooting experience like they do. With that being said, I knew I wanted to suppress it. So back when I built this, pistol braces were a real thing. And then we had the whole whatever, everybody knows what happened with the pistol braces and now it doesn't really matter. But um, needed to be a short barrel, eight inches seemed to be optimum for me. Anything longer, it was just a waste. Uh, that's what she said. Anything shorter, I think I could get away with anything around seven, um, but eight inches was available and the price of performance made sense for me. Adding the suppressor on it, basically puts it out to 16 inches, a little shorter than that, uh, but it's still maneuverable with inside of your home without being unwieldy large, uh, being able to go through room to room if you had to. So that's why I needed it to be a short barrel rifle or an AR pistol with a short barrel. This is one of the biggest parts of it though. The ballistics of the cartridge. 45 ACP and 10 mil just don't have the characteristics that 300 blackout does. I have seen some posts from other people testing 300 blackout, um, and I'll put the link in the description if I can find it again, where they put three inches of ballistics gel in front of 22 gauge steel, so pretty thin steel, and then another nine or 10, 16 inches of ballistics gel behind it. 300 blackout expanded, this was the Lehigh maximum expansion cartridge, expanded in the three inches of gel went through the steel and still penetrated nine more inches. 45 ACP went through the gel, hit the steel and just didn't even go through. The characteristics of what you can do with 300 blackout vastly destroy 45 ACP. Whether it's you have to go out the distance, your capacity, it just made more sense to go with 300 blackout. Is the ammo more expensive? Yes but I reload my own ammo. So for me, it's not a huge difference um, to get a cartridge that is superior. Now I know I'm gonna hear the comments from 1911 fanboys that have been using 45 ACP for their home defense or self-defense for decades, and I get it. Look, it's an effective cartridge, it is. No one wants to get hit by a one 45 ACP to their chest. It's gonna be devastating. But the dependability <clears throat> and the effectiveness I can get out of a short barreled 300 blackout just exceeds what 45 ACP can do. And 300 blackout can also have the supersonic put back in it and just be absolutely devastating compared to anything 45 ACP would want to do. I don't ever really plan on shooting this out to 100 yards or anything like that or hunting with it. But just having that option gives it better value. And another part about it, the capacity we kind of hit on, um, most of the 45 ACP or 10 mil pistol caliber carbines that you can pick up generally come with like your 22 to 24 round Glock mags, um, so less capacity than an AR. Uh, you can get those like Glock drum mags that are around 60, 70 bucks when they're on sale. I have not found somebody that really has great luck with those feeding 
uh, they can go all the way up to a hundred dollar range for them that, I, that you have a little better luck with feeding. It's just one of those things that you don't want to risk reliability when it comes to home defense, self-defense, whatever. If you're plinking out at the range, yeah, grab yourself that 150 round weird double drum mag. And if it feeds or doesn't, who cares? You're shooting at paper. It's just fun. But when it comes to you needing to protect yourself or your family, it needs to work every single time. And lastly, price. Getting into a quality 45 or 10 millimeter pistol caliber carbine, PCC, easily over two grand, mostly around to 2,500 and sometimes even higher. That's insane to me. When I can build this for right around 800 bucks, uh, not, not including like the optic or the suppressor or anything like that, but just the firearm for about 800 bucks because that's what you're getting with that 45 PCC is just the firearm. You're not getting an optic, you're not getting a laser, a light, or a suppressor, or anything like that. Um, that saves you a lot of money for ammo, for doing drills and practicing, and also being able to buy a suppressor. Now the suppressor itself on this, like I said, costs more than the whole firearm, basically, um, not including the accessories. But that's a big deal for a lot of us. We all have a budget, and it's a certain level. And any firearm is better than no firearm as long as you're practicing and training with it. So I want to make clear that 300 Blackout isn't for everyone. Hell, 45 ACP isn't for everyone. Uh, if, if budget is really in mind, Smith & Wesson, the M&P 2.0, I still swear by them for reliability and the ease of shooting it. It feels great in the hands, great capacity for a 9mm pistol, and they work. They flat out work and a used one around $400, you're set. I went back and forth on this for a couple months before I finally just caved in and got the 300 blackout set up. I really wanted to have the 45 or the 10 mil just because of kind of the cool factor and I like them. Um, they're just really expensive and the effectiveness of the cartridge just can't match what the capabilities 300 Blackout has, especially if you're going into the supersonic realm. And the ability for this to go out to 100 yards with subsonic, but even further with supersonic, just further solidified why this is just such a better value uh, as a home defense. It just made sense for me, the reliability, the consistency, and the effectiveness, along with the price, make this my favorite choice for your main home defense weapon. Well, I hope this was informative for some of you. I think a lot of it is already kind of known information, but I wanted to go over and maybe answer some questions for anyone that was confused as to why I picked 300 Blackout over other cartridge options. I still do keep decentralized safes throughout my house where I'll have the 300 blackout in one area. I'll have a nine mil pistol here. I'll have a 223 here. Just so each area of the home has some kind of protection because if I'm in the basement and something happens upstairs, I'm not gonna be able to run up two flights of steps, grab something and neutralize the threat if they're already in between that and the weapon. So another video to come in the future will be decentralizing of safes and what I chose and why I chose them in the future. So, it's been a minute since I had a video out. Life's crazy. I really do appreciate you guys coming around. I am weirdly close to a thousand subscribers. So thank you everyone for sharing the videos, liking them and commenting on them. You're amazing. Bye.